This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. What's the situation at SpaceX's Starbase? How are Starship 20 and Booster 4 coming along? Any orbital launches coming up? SpaceX Starship design changes from 2019 to 2021. SpaceX producing the holy grail of rockets? Inspiration4 has landed again. How are our private astronauts doing? Let's find out. What about it? Go for launch. We're go for launch. Let's light this candle. Ignition sequence start. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And as always, there's been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates so much is happening at the Starbase in Texas again. Three releases on my channel in five days and the team is never standing still to somehow keep up with the folks at SpaceX. The goal? To build the first fully reusable rocket in human history. Lewis, of course, was on site again taking the latest pictures and videos for all of us. This is Starship 20, SpaceX's first orbital shot candidate. It's supposed to be the first Starship in human history to enter orbit and to do that first spin around the planet. Then it's supposed to deorbit, try to survive re-entry with its massive heat shield and splash down into the Pacific Ocean close to Kauai. Many rockets have been to space. At least from SpaceX's Falcon 9 production line, many boosters have even made the trip back to Earth safely. But first stages? Zero. None of the first stages that have ever been used until today have ever made the trip back down to our planet. Not even talking about reusable condition. The difference is simple. Even though they might look similar, there's a big difference between a Starship or an upper stage and a Super Heavy or a first stage like Booster 4, which you're currently looking at. But what makes it so much more difficult to return a second stage? It all comes down to speed. A Falcon 9 booster reaches around 4600 km per hour when returning back to the planet. That's pretty fast. An upper stage is traveling at around 28000 km per hour though. That's about six times the velocity. That is a lot of kinetic energy. And the only way of expanding this energy is atmospheric dissipation because the amount of rocket fuel needed to slow it down would almost be equal to that of accelerating it and getting it into orbit in the first place. So if SpaceX manages to achieve an upper stage re-entry with their Starship concept, it would be a first and a very important one too. It's not just an enormous rocket capable of getting immense amounts of payload into space, it would also be the first one to be reused. And that's key to so many things. It would make incredibly cheap spaceflight compared to today's costs possible. It would enable high speed launch cadences as not only the booster, but the entire rocket could be reused. And last but not least, it would allow astronauts to return from another planet's surface back to Earth they'd still have their upper stage as a vehicle to live in and use as a ride back home. It really is a whole different story to have a fully reusable rocket. The upper stage, even though smaller than the booster, arguably is more important to reuse. If you manage that, you've tapped into the holy grail of rockets. You have chosen wisely. I know you're waiting for that flight, I am too, but to have a real chance of getting it done, SpaceX needs a few things in place. And one of those things was brought into place on Friday. SpaceX has rolled out another cryo shell towards the launch site that makes five. Another shell here, another GSE tank there, the first orbital fuel farm has been growing a lot in recent weeks. More and more tanks and shells are in place. More and more plumbing and systems are installed and the whole farm looks more and more complete. There still is some work left though. These systems, for example, presumed to be regasifiers for the tank farm, saw lots of love in recent days. Lots of work is also still going on on the inside of the already installed GSE tanks. The large white tube going into the tank, by the way, is not for fueling, it's an air hose. Workers working on the inside do need to breathe now and then. So what's left to do? How many more GSE tanks and shells need to be rolled out to the fuel farm before it can go operational? Brendan Lewis has been busy again preparing another one of his excellent Starship build diagrams for Team Space. It shows the latest progress on the tank farm and on Starship and Super Heavy prototypes until September 19th. 
And it shows that there is only one more GSE tank and three more shells missing. The three shells are already done and ready for rollout. Most likely they are waiting for the work on the inside of the GSE tanks to be done. And GSE-8 is being worked on inside the midway. Here's the GSE-8 forward dome through Lewis's lens, ready for stacking. It'll be done soon and then roll out to the launch site. It will be the last one. And once some more plumbing work is done, the orbital fuel farm should, in theory, be ready for action. The orbital launch mount, booster 4 and the launch support tower are still being worked on as well. Still crazy close to the fuel farm and still with some work left to be done. Everything at the launch site seems under construction. Cranes are everywhere, scaffolding covers most of the structures and the SpaceX workforce is doing four shifts on a 24-7 schedule to make all this happen as quickly as possible. Chopsticks and carriage systems also right next to fuel farm and launch support tower are being fleshed out right now. That is typically the last step before installation. Thousands of hours of work are being poured into these systems by countless workers right now. Recently hydraulic lines and larger pipes have appeared on the chopsticks and the carriage system. A new hinge was installed on the carriage system, which supposedly will move and guide the chopsticks on a catch attempt all while lifting and stacking starships and super heavy boosters. The purpose is still unknown. There are a few concepts about it though. Over from SpaceX 3D creation eccentric never sleeps. He's constantly busy pumping out new renders and he's already done some concept work on what the whole gadget might look like. Let me introduce you to Mechazilla as it most likely will be in the end. The carriage system attached to the tower itself running along rails. The chopsticks connected to the carriage system and able to open and close. And SpaceX wants to land rockets on it. The largest rocket ever built. In this render the pincher is already installed as well. It's that plier-like structure below the chopsticks. Mechazilla is close to being put together now and it became exactly what I talked about a long time ago. SpaceX's goal with this tower is to shift as many systems from the rocket into the tower as possible and make pad operations as fast as possible. Those chopsticks will basically be the Starship and booster legs, just outsourced to the tower. And all the systems are so close together to have the shortest possible distances to go with ground operations before and after a launch. It's basically a Swiss knife equivalent of a launch support structure. As many tasks as possible taken out of the Starship and booster and into a multi-tool system at the pad. What do you think? How long will it take SpaceX to finish all the ground equipment and be ready for the first orbital launch? As always, tell me in the comments. On the last Why No Comment release I called this structure a new mystery structure and right after releasing the episode it revealed its purpose. It's been transported to the launch site together with CryoShell 5 and immediately put to use on Raptor engine maintenance. So it's a staircase that makes it easier for the workers to reach the engines under the prototypes for checks and maintenance. Next up we'll talk about a new and official SpaceX Starship render and what it might reveal about the design changes and we'll take a look at our homecoming astronauts from Inspiration4. The Haley has landed. The Y family needs your support. Give the video a like, subscribe and share it with your friends on Twitter or Facebook to show the YouTube algorithm that you appreciate the content. Looking for a more direct way of support? Become a Patreon or YouTube member by clicking the join button right under the video and get some awesome perks. Gain access to our Discord server where you can meet me and the rest of the community or get a completely ad-free release of each and every episode provided just for channel members. Or do you know about the Y Warehouse? Shop for your next Starship shirt, hoodie or cap and look as awesome as you feel. Links can be found in the description, you rock! SpaceX has a tradition of releasing new Starship renders on occasion and usually those show the latest or at least close to the latest internal design philosophy for the whole project. This for example is a render released by SpaceX in 2018. Back then it showed the world the latest idea behind the project. Three tail fins, white on the outside, carbon composite construction. Same thing in 2019, a lot had changed. Four flaps, stainless steel, landing legs on the Starship, booster with fins. Now SpaceX has done it again and we'll take a close look at what has changed since the 2019 render. 
Now, you'll probably be saying that you already know this new look, but let's take a closer look. After all, this is official stuff and indeed there are a few new things here. Let's sum up the differences between the 2019 and the 2021 versions of the render. Number 1. There are grid fins on Super Heavy and they are not retracting. Many have asked me before why SpaceX doesn't seem to want to retract the grid fins on Ascending similarly to what they do on a Falcon 9 booster. Apparently the drag is so slight that it's not essential and it reduces complexity and weight. Number 2. The design of the large panoramic window has changed once again. It's done this multiple times. It got slightly smaller again, reducing the weight and the complexity of the construction. Number 3. The window rows below the panoramic window got reduced from 6 to 4, reducing, you guessed it, complexity and weight. Number 4. On top of that, the number of windows on the rows got significantly reduced. We're talking 12 windows down from around 50 and again, complexity and weight. You see where this is going? Number 5. The flaps are missing the heat shield cover on the leeward side, reducing, yup, complexity and weight. Number 6. The engines do not have a cover, they are out in the open, reducing a lot of weight by removing the last two rings of the engine section. It seems that Raptor engines can take the heat. And finally, number 7. We already know this one. No landing legs, reducing complexity and weight by moving the system to the launch support tower. So all the changes from the previous render to this one go in one single direction. Complexity and weight reduction. And both aspects are crucial for the success of the mission. Reducing complexity means less maintenance and less wear. Removing windows, for example, dramatically increases the structural integrity of the rocket. At the same time, it also takes out a lot of weight. One sizable panoramic window and 12 smaller windows are still more than enough to enjoy the view and if it means that starships will be more capable and less maintenance intensive, that's the way to go. This means that SpaceX is slowly entering the optimization phase. The 2019 render can basically be seen as an inspirational goal type of visualization. The 2021 version looks much more mature and down to Mars if you get what I mean. It's grown, it's matured and it's very likely much closer to the final production. Lots to look forward to in the next few months. Inspiration for Splashdown that's right, the Brave Inspiration4 crew went to space, had the time of their lives and made it back down safely. The Haley has landed. And the others too, of course. I just think she's super cool, big Haley fan here. Saturday, September 18th. Haley, Sian, Chris and Jared are getting ready for their hot return back to Earth. Everything looks nominal, atmospheric drag increasing. Imagine sitting in that capsule at this time. Yet again another reminder that these amateur astronauts are something extraordinary. SpaceX has opened up low Earth orbit for businesses more than ever before. And of course, thanks to SpaceX's careful planning and preparation, everything went just fine. Two phase burns the day before to reduce the orbital height from their peak of 590 kilometers. The trunk was jettisoned to re-enter on its own and to expose the heat shield. Then came the deorbit burn which set them on their trajectory back down to the splashdown zone. Re-entry above middle America, parachute deployment shortly after. And splashdown of the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. That was the plan and everything went fine. All those Inspiration4 fans out there, you can take a deep breath, they've returned safely. These are the very first pictures that SpaceX broadcasted to the world. You can see the capsule racing through the sky at high speed. Then came the drogue chute deployment. A first set of two small chutes, they stabilize the path of the capsule, take out some more speed from 350 miles per hour down to about 120 and pull out the main chutes. SpaceX showed some spectacular pictures of the chute deployment sequence, as always perfectly orchestrated. And splashdown. Incredible achievement. The first all-private space mission is coming to an end and a new era of private spaceflight is just opening up. The door is open now to more private flights, to a possible space infrastructure. Some place they can actually go to can be built once starships are operational and I can personally guarantee you that I will be going as soon as it's somewhat affordable. Another episode filled with firsts and achievements that will change spaceflight forever. SpaceX is delivering these things almost on a daily basis. It's an honor to be alive and to be able to talk about all this twice a week. 
Now let's have a look at today's sponsor and don't click away just yet. The deal is actually pretty sweet. Whether it's data and identity theft, traceability, intrusive advertising or geoblocking, Surfshark VPN encrypts your data and enables you to change your virtual location. Have you ever been greeted with the message that this site or video is not available in your country? Streaming services like Netflix or Disney Plus, for example, have vastly different libraries in different countries. Surfshark makes you outsmart them easily by removing the so-called geoblock from your account. Just activate your VPN, change your virtual location, refresh the page and you're good to go for countless more Netflix evenings. Use my code to get 83% off plus 3 extra months for free and at the same time support What About It. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there is no risk. Surf with your own set of rules, links in the description. Today's supporter shoutout goes to Sebastian Rolls, Charlie Anderson and many others. You rock so much. I honestly don't know how to thank you for all your support. It's what enables us to do all this in the first place and it's an honor to have you become a part of the Y family. Look forward to entirely ad-free and early releases of every episode. The entire team's gratitude is yours. Make sure to hop on our supporter exclusive Discord to join more than a thousand spaceflight enthusiasts and to give me a chance to thank you in person. Today's team shoutout goes to Jay, who's been working in the background to get some new stream overlays ready for you and for our next live stream. They look great and without him we would have had a hard time getting something like this working. So thank you from the entire team, Jay. You rock. Atmospheric... Oh, come on, come on, let, let's do that again. 28,000 kilometers per second though. Per hour though. <laughs> Okay, so that's gonna be a difficult one. Bear with me. Accelerating rating. Oh, come on. Yes! Pew form. Come on. Next up, we'll talk. Next up, we'll talk. Tiny tail ping. But significantly. That's right. That's right. That's right. Normal. That's right. That's right. Toe phase burns. What? Oh, two phase burns, not toe phase. Have fun editing. <laughs>